Hi and welcome to another video where we're going to move another step along the way to building our own version of this radio control unit. Uh, for those who have been following along, I've already mentioned that um, to build this we need a few different components including something to generate our 27 MHz carrier wave, which is a crystal oscillator and there's a video for that. And another aspect that we need really in this overall structure is something to generate some square wave pulses that are going to have the different duty cycles to tell the truck whether to go straight or turn left or turn right. And additionally, the, the frequency of the square wave pulses are going to tell the truck whether to go forwards or go backwards. One way that we can generate these square waves is to do, use an Arduino unit. So that's basically what we're going to focus on in this video is uh, putting together some circuitry to tell the Arduino what we're wanting to send and uh, put some code together to generate the different square waves of the different frequencies. So here's our Arduino and our controller circuitry. Over on the left here was the crystal oscillator for the other video. You can kind of ignore that. But the, what we've got here is four buttons that will uh, drag the Arduino pins down to ground when they're pressed. And then the, each of those buttons are hooked up to Arduino's pins 8 through 11. And then our output pin is going to be 13 is where we're going to send our square waves from. Okay, so let's have a look at the Arduino code. Now, I want to give some credit where credit is due. Rather than me writing all of this code from scratch, I actually borrowed some code from this Electro Noobs uh, site, and he has a good explanation about how some of it works, but also it's worth checking out his site in general. He has a channel with lots of interesting stuff in the electronic space, so if you're interested in that, feel free to, to check him out. In terms of the Arduino code, uh, first thing we have is some setup. So I'm putting our input pins into an input mode and I'm using this input pull up mode again, which I've talked about in another video. And basically that means that these pins will sit at five volts unless they're pulled to ground by pushing one of those buttons. And I've also set up the output pin uh, 13 to be in the output mode. So the next part of the code here is pretty well covered by Electro Noobs in his videos, but the, the general gist of it is that it will uh, fire and interrupt after a certain delay set by a timer value that we specify in this OCR1A register. And um, that's the gist of it. What we're gonna do here where we've put some custom code is we're gonna read from those uh, pins that are associated with the buttons on the breadboard, pin eight and pin nine, and if uh, pin, the button associated with pin 8 is being pressed, then we're going to assume that we're going to be driving forward and we're going to set our um, OCR1A register to the value of 18. And the reason we're doing that is um, that we want our overall sort of cycle of um, the square waves to be about 820 hertz, which is a period of about 1,220 microseconds. But we may want to drop the square wave pulse at sort of 25% of the time, the, the duty cycle time, or at the halfway point, or at the three quarter point. So what I'm going to do is have a interrupt firing at about 305 microseconds, and that will just give us the ability to, to stop and drop here, or stop and drop here, or stop and drop here. For the scenario where the other button for backwards has been pressed, then what we're going to do is set our OCR1A variable to a longer value 50, which is going to ultimately correspond to the period and frequency that the truck is expecting for a reversing signal. Uh, if neither of those buttons are pressed, then we're going to disable our interrupts, set our output state to high, and then the truck will have no signal to go forward or backwards. With regard to the turning, uh, if button associated with the pin input 10 or pin 11 are pressed, then we're going to set a variable which is kind of our turn variable to uh, one for one direction and two for the other. And if neither of those are being pushed, then we're just going to set our turn variable back to zero. And that's kind of our controller code that's going to interpret what's uh, what to do based on the input buttons and what's being pressed. It all kind of then comes together in this interrupt service routine for the timer. And the way this works is we have a counter for how many times that the interrupt service routine has been called. And if the first time it's called, uh, we happen to have our turn uh, button being pressed, then we, uh, we drop our output signal down then, which is gonna be sort of a 25% duty cycle. If we aren't turning, then what we're gonna do is not drop it then, but the second time that the interrupt service routine is called, we'll drop then, which will give us that 50% duty cycle. 
And if we're turning the other way, then we will do it on the third time that the routine is called, which will give us our 75% duty cycle for turning the other direction. And then once we've run through a few times those, those interrupts, we'll then set the thing back to high again so that we can do another square wave pulse. And the, this digital right here is what's outputting that value to the output pin. So we're going to give it a test. Uh, the Arduino so has already got the software installed on it. Here's our buttons for pushing and we've got our power for that. The Omega here is just going to be acting as an oscilloscope for us. So it's taking the output and it's going to publish that to Microsoft Excel so we can see what's going on. Let's give the thing a whirl. So here is with just the forward button pushed and we can see we're generating a square wave with 820 hertz and about a 50% duty cycle. If we push one of the turning buttons Then we're getting a 22-25% duty cycle and if we push the other turning button, yeah 75% duty cycle that way. And if we go for reverse, we get a 50% duty cycle about 305 hertz, one of the turns, 25% duty cycle and the other turn. 75% duty cycle and about 306 hertz. So it should work quite well if we hook it up to the rest of the circuitry for controlling the truck. So here we've got our controller circuitry now wired in with the crystal oscillator and the other transmitter circuitry. And there's forwards, backwards, and our turns, and our turns and forwards. So it works pretty nicely.